Hello everybody, Zeno here, gonna make a quick video about the PlayStation emulator EPSXE um, because some people have been requesting on how I get the graphics to look so sharp and make the game run smoother so we're gonna dive in on my configurations you guys might have to go find this stuff on the internet because I don't really remember the links on where I got them so let's go to that screen I have it open right now and I should tell you guys the exact type of rendering output here I might zoom in if I can here in post but I have Pete's actually let's just go to a different menu this is the way here we go so Pete's OpenGL 2 tweaks 2.2 and I have very very specific settings here I have it where I play in window mode sometimes because I like to multitask when I'm playing games these are resolutions to be whatever you want you know if you can play it in 4k you can play it in 4k I don't know even if the renderer lets it go that big but that's what um, the internal X resolution and the internal Y resolution are the higher these are the sharper your um, game will be so I don't know if this just scales with the resolution but there is literally three different selections or three or four depending on the settings just if you got a modern if you got a, any anything that's near a modern graphics card from like 2011 and up you can crank these to the really really high settings stretching mode is a personal preference if you like it to be stretched to your 16 by 9 screen or whatever screen size you have make that stretch I like to keep it at the same aspect ratio as the PlayStation's internal resolution so it'll actually look like a 4 by 3 style image that'll make it work render mode um, I think I was going off another video and I just used use frame buffer object it's the highest setting if you have the CPU performance and GPU performance to do that I recommend to crank that sucker up uh, texture filtering again this is a personal preference a lot of PlayStation games have sprites and these things can smooth them out if you like the style of sprites with not being super blurry and smooth I would turn this thing off keep it off if you want them blurry or you want them to scale and be like this type of weird smoothing effect they have uh, you can turn that to certain settings like extended plus smooth sprites but again that's all personal preference high res textures um, this thing is what the emulator does to artificially sharpen textures it doesn't really do that it just it upscales them without really upscaling it's hard to explain but um I don't know if it's also a personal preference because you can smooth certain textures and you can smooth other textures that aren't on 3d models it's kind of complicated and you really have to fiddle with it to make sure you know what you like I have it on stretch so it increases the resolution to whatever it needs to be so I don't really notice anything too weird graphics card VRAM unless you have an ancient graphics card and you have to set it to something specific you don't really have to if you have a modern graphics card just set it to zero the emulator knows what to do um, off-screen drawing I would put it on standard because most games can accept that without crashing or do slowing weird random slowdowns the frame buffer effects I set that to standard uh, if you set it to full it can actually slow your game down even if you have modern hardware because this these emulators are still based off architectures that are almost decades old at this point so if you want the most stability keep it on standard frame buffer upload keep that on standard um, I do have this MDEC filter here in the MISC section. It it um, it like re dithers or de dithers. I can't really remember off the top of my head. But if you were to render a PlayStation uh, full motion video on your full screen, if it was like a 1920 by 1080 screen, it would look super pixelated because those video clips are like 200p. Like they are incredibly low. That helps fix it a little bit and it makes it a little bit more bearable to watch on a modern television or screen so I would keep that on um, anything down here I don't have turned on at all full screen filters they're very specific I've never had to mess with that at all and then um, if you ever turn on special game fixes there are certain things that certain games need to run correctly like Legend of Dragoon uh, I don't have that on right now because I'm not playing it right now but always keep the ones you want to run smooth checked on for those games I don't have a lot of PlayStation 1 games so that's pretty much it for the graphics but that's not everything there's also um, audio drivers 
I just use the built-in core because I run, nothing ever slows down unless it's the PlayStation emulating its normal graphics where it would slow down in that situation on a real PlayStation, so that should be easy. But the biggest thing we want to get here, and hopefully I'll put a timestamp for the people who really want to get this, this specific part, the part that actually smoothens your video game, um, is in the options here on more modern uh, PSXE emulators because there are older versions that some people still get these days that does that don't have this feature, but it's a, called a CPU overclock. And this is how I get Legend of Lagaia to actually run at a, a smooth 60 frames per second because that game has a... It doesn't have a limiter. Uh, some games, like Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories, have built-in uh, CPU timers that have to meet a certain frame rate. And if you turn this up, it'll literally just double the game speed if you set it on times two. If you set it on times three, it'll triple the game speed and you can't do anything about it. I figured this out the hard way because I was playing Lagaya. I was experiencing the silky smooth frame rate. And then I switched over to Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories 10 minutes later. And I was wondering why it was running super duper fast. So the best way to get high performance, and you're going to have to do this on a game by game basis, is to check this, crank it up and hope that the game stays smooth. Now, the only reason I have... I'm going to do Legend of the Guys to show off the effects of it. So, I'm going to load up a save file here really fast. I actually... Actually, do I play with it? Alright, sorry guys. I had to go get my Xbox controller so I can actually play the games and show them off. So, let's go recheck these uh, configurations here. I'm on one times. Um, CPU overclock, and I'm gonna go run into a battle in Legend of Lagaya. I'm gonna walk somewhere and then get into a fight. In fact, I'll see if I can go full screen. So I'm going full screen. Um, I know my frame rate is not really being reliable in the corner there because it, as soon as it hits two eights, it won't refresh. So I wonder if I can actually, yeah. So you'll see right here, the game is running at 20 frames per second. It is struggling. To render this this battle and it's not like I have the graphics turned up or anything this is exactly how the game would run on a normal PlayStation trust me I have the game disc and I played it for years so it dynamically adjusts the frame rate depending on the load on the PlayStation so when it's zoomed out here and it has all the models going it'll run at 20 FPS when it zooms on to Vaughn over here it'll try and get to 30 and sometimes it'll dip back to 24 or 20 frames per second and this looks pretty smooth for um, an RPG so let's see how much it uh, slows down when he does Vance craze but it even does that jittering loading you you rarely get that once you do this CPU overclock because it's constantly enabling v-sync like this game gets choppy It is, it's pretty much just running at 20 and 15 frames constantly, and that's why the game felt so jittery. So, now let's close the game out because you can't change the settings. Oh, there we go. So, you have to close the whole emulator out to change the settings. I'm going to go set it to three times. Run Lagaya again. And the funny thing is, it literally emulates a, a stronger CPU of the PlayStation 1. So when you do the frame speed up here, it won't be as effective because it's actually running at the intended frame rate. That's just a bonus little thing I like to talk about here. Oh, so three times may be too much. Look at that. So I don't run it on three times. Memory card error occurred. That's another problem I guess you'll run into. I forgot that happened. So I'll set it to two times. Two times should make it load okay I don't think it's the speeding up because it's literally just emulating the the frame right here so you can already tell this, this game is designed to run at 60 frames per second because the menus run at 60 frames per second but whenever it's hugely under load it'll run slower so now we're running at double the frame rate this is 40 frames per second already feels much smoother The transition was 60 frames per second. You never see that. And here it is running at 40 FPS. But look how much... That looks like a Tekken game. It runs so smooth. Like at the arcades. Here when it gets to here, instead of playing at 30 frames per second, 
plays at smooth, silky 60 frames per second, and it feels like a very responsive, like, fighter game at points. So, let's go attack this thing again with Vaughn's craze. Look, there's no hitch there. This is how much of a big improvement you get. And it makes the game much more bearable. And it's at least running it at 30 frames instead of 15. That is amazing. So if we can get past that memory card error, we could probably run the game always at 60. And the best way to figure that out would probably be to just start a new game file and use save states instead of saving. So I might do that one day just to see how well it runs. But uh, yeah, so there, it runs a lot smoother. Let's go try another game and see if it actually speeds up or not like I was talking about. Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. I'll do two times. Load up Yu-Gi-Oh! We'll speed through this stupid screen here. Actually, I'll let it play at normal speed. See? Two times speed. I'm not even... Look, I'll press F4 to unlock the frame rate. Now it's running at 120 frames because it's trying to speed it up. But it's still trying to run at 60 frames per second when the game wasn't designed to do that. And it's making the music play fast. Uh, I don't know why it brought me into this menu. Let me jump cut. So I'm going to press start. Start. You have to be very careful with it because it like almost detects double inputs for some reason. I'm gonna go duel someone. Uh, Metal Mage, because it's always Metal Mage, right, guys? If you played this game, you'd know. Well, I, uh, I, uh, wow, I didn't even press the button twice. So it's running quite odd. Music's playing just as fast. I mean, double as fast. It looks like the gameplay is still normal. Um, why did I do that? There we go. Okay. Need twin headed thunder dragon. So this still plays at normal speed because it's again it's a 60 FPS game. The music was tied to the CPU's clock speed which makes it run double as fast even though the game's running at normal speed. These are the kind of emulation problems you get when you do stuff like this. So, let's see what I was doing here. Let's hurry and end this duel. I can feel it hitching more, it's, it's quite odd. Oh, thank God. <laughs> so yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories doesn't cooperate well with that CPU overclock. But, um, Crawling Dragon? I'm saving. If I can save, I'm saving. That was actually quite a good pick. Let's see, hope it, hopefully it won't error. Sometimes it'll do that. Save complete. Okay, cool. So, yeah, that's literally on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, there's not really anything else that I have on here other than the fact that you just have to constantly change the CPU overclocking. So, that is pretty much it. Uh, I haven't really tested on any other games because I've only played a couple RPGs on this. So... I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope your games look sharper, better, and if you need to have a, if you've somehow watched the whole video without skipping things, if you want to know the specific driver that I use in those settings, look for Pete's OpenGL2 Tweaks 2.2, because there's a couple other versions I have on here that you can accidentally screw up, and things won't work right, or as smooth, but that's the one I use, and I still have the other drivers, but 2.2 is the one I use. So, there you go. So... Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll actually come out with something that's not related to emulating here soon. So, Xeno's out. Bye bye